What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, my life is always busy doing a multitude of things. I literally am doing one thing one minute and doing something totally different the next. Um, today has been... Um, I've got my inventables. It's cutting pieces right now. When I get back, I need to sand those out and start varnishing those. I've got chicken that's marinating for the smoker that uh, I need to smoke. I got some cheese that I need to put in the smoker and cold smoke that. Um, keeping up with the Cowboys. We got the playoff games tomorrow night. There's so many things. Oh, and I just got back, or I'm coming back from the post office. Steve, the order you just made. Uh, about an hour, two hours ago, for a Big D Energy shirt. It's in the mail on the way. On the way. So, I stay busy doing stuff, and I'm happy about what I do. Sometimes, I get so busy, I just don't know, I don't remember what I've already done. I mean, it's just like I'm in a trance. And a lot of times when I do these videos, after I've done them, I have no idea what I've said. I don't know if it's an out-of-body experience or what. But it's just the way it is. So this weekend, we have the Cowboys going against San Francisco. And make no mistake about it, this game is huge. Mike McCarthy talks about this game being a sacred scar or a sacred wound. You know, I guess you get, you know, if you got keloid skin, like, uh, I tell you what, there you go. Right there. I can tell you about that one right there in the web of my hand. And I can remember that happening. I can remember it because I was downstairs. This is when I was married to my first wife. And I had a workshop in my basement. And I had a Craig jig that cuts angles holes in um, the wood so you can make a joint. And you have to put the drill bit in, but you have to kind of work it up and down because the bit gets clogged up. Uh, school's getting let out, so that's why traffic is kind of heavy. Um, but I remember my ex-wife yelling down the stairs because something happened with Michael. And when she did, I wasn't paying attention. I pulled it out too far, and the blade came out of the jig, and it went right there in the web of my hand. The blade was so hot, the drill bit, that it cauterized the wound and you could see where it twisted the skin. I was literally looking into a hole into my thumb web here that wasn't bleeding. And that's one of those things that you'll remember. And apparently that's the kind of thing that the Cowboys are remembering last year. And here it is, Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones would probably the greatest opportunity that we've had to make some noise and maybe go to a Super Bowl for the first time in 27 years. And Jerry Jones senses this. Jerry Jones is not a young man anymore. And opportunities in life don't come around. And sometimes we screw them up. We screw up opportunities and we have nobody to blame but ourselves for not doing the right thing. And you look back and say, oh my God, what did I do? How did I screw that up? How did I screw that up? And you look back and say, I wish I could do things differently, but you can't. You have to live with your consequences. So Jerry Jones right now, is talking about, you know, those past 49, 49ers great Cowboys rivalry. Thinking about, you know, how he took Deion Sanders and got Charles Haley away from San Francisco and literally wrestling the team of the 80s away from the San Francisco 49ers. And he's talking about, you know, the Alvin Harpers going across the middles and stuff and, and things. And thinking about the greatness that was and wanting to get a taste of that. But see, here's my thing right here. Because maybe 
Jerry Jones screwing up, he has an opportunity to fix a great wrong. When you think about those 90s teams, when you talk about Alvin Harper and you talk about Dion and you talk about Charles Haley and Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and all of these great players, that collection of people does not happen without one thing. One thing that Jerry has tried to erase out of memory. That's Jimmy Johnson. We've heard Jerry with little bits and pieces and saying, you know, uh, I don't know why I messed it up, but I effed it up. You know, he, we, we saw him at the Pro Football Hall of Fame telling us that, Jer that, that Jimmy Johnson was going to go in the Ring of Honor. In the Ring of Honor. And yet, he's not there yet. Jerry Jones, see, and this is where karma comes through. This is where I think karma comes through because Jerry had the opportunity last year after basically using the situation to try and steal some of the headlines from Jimmy Johnson's big moment in his career. You know, saying, we're going to put you in the ring of honor. Like that was a bigger thing than him going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That was Jerry Jones doing Jerry Jones things. But see, last year when we were about to take on San Francisco, I had said, you want some extra lift? You want to go ahead and set yourself up for greatness? You want to make a difference? Bring back Jimmy Johnson and put him in the ring of honor for that game. That brings back all of that magic of the Dallas Cowboys. That brings back all of those players that were instrumental in it. That buries the hatchet. That appeases the football gods. Jerry had the opportunity to do that last year. And he didn't do it. Didn't do it. Still has not made amends for that yet. And when you go through in life and you look at mistakes that you have made and the consequences that have come along with it, very rarely do you ever have a chance to make up for it because you have to accept responsibilities for what you do. And Jerry, you're sitting here at the precipice of greatness. You're sitting there. You're so close to what you want. This is where you need to do the right thing. You cannot leave any stone unturned. And this is where you, you say you got on your knees before the third one or the first one. And beg the Lord to give you that one. And say, I won't want nothing else. You said you'd write a check big enough to do it. Then why won't you do this one thing? Jimmy Johnson doesn't win the Super Bowl without you, Jerry. Let me say that. Jimmy Johnson does not win Super Bowls without you. And Jerry, guess what, buddy? You don't win those Super Bowls without him. You've said any number of 500 coaches could have won with the team I put together. Well, apparently, you haven't put the team together until maybe now to do that. Jerry, get her done. Get her done.